what's up beautiful people listen there and welcome to the channel today we're gonna to be checking this video and it's titled dd shy woman in the face dd allegedly smashed mcmillan osha kristen comes in trouble this is pretty interesting and it's no news about daddy's new lawsuit so yeah i'm excited to hear what you gotta say on this one let's check it out hello everybody welcome to the impressive channel in my previous video i talked about the producer rodney jones who goes by Lil rod he just made headlines about his lawsuit against diddy and he detailed how diddy would make advances towards him unwanted advances he alleged that he was essayed and he was threatened he also claimed that diddy was involved in a lot of illegal activity like trafficking entertaining minors allegedly drugs shootings etc he allegedly was committing crimes under the guise of his music company and people are now saying that he is guilty of rico and this lawsuit is over 70 pages and the details are absolutely insane i did do a breakdown a very concise breakdown of the lawsuit but there's just a lot more in it that was just insane and I was wondering if Rodney had proof of all of these allegations, but according to the lawsuit, it said that he has irrefutable evidence of all of the illegal activity that Diddy allegedly was involved in from trafficking, illegal drug possession, owning illegal firearms, lacing alcoholic beverages and giving it to minors and escorts. It was also alleged that his son, Christian Combs, was out here drugging and taking advantage of women. And he implicated other people in the lawsuit, including young Miami's cousin, Kuba Gooden Jr., and Diddy's other son, Justin Combs. There were some redacted names in the lawsuit as well. And in my previous video, I talked about those redacted names possibly being Chris Brown and Meek Mill. It was alleged that they were consorting with escorts and minors at Diddy's home, allegedly. Rodney also claims that Diddy tried to groom him into sleeping with him, allegedly. And there was a part in the lawsuit that went viral recently. And in this line, it said this, Mr. Combs, who's Diddy, informed Mr. Jones, who's Rodney, that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper Redacted, R&B singer Redacted, and Stevie J. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys if he engaged in homosexuality. Now this part was actually very interesting to me because oh I do know that God. Diddy has connections to the Grammys. He's actually on the Grammy board. And it does make me wonder if some of the people on the Grammy board are making people do certain things to get these awards. I don't know, but it is something to think about. Also, when hmm. it came to the whole redacted rapper and redacted R&B singer that Diddy allegedly had intercourse with, they didn't say the names of these artists, but in the footnote, they did hint that one of the artists was a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj, who we could assume is Meek Mill. And also, it was an R&B singer who performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency, which we could assume is Usher. This is a little disturbing uh -huh. to me because Diddy has known Usher since he was young, like very young. When Usher was first starting his career, he was actually around Diddy. And who knows what Usher experienced being around Diddy. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, just out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes. We used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early with me. And now he's one of the richest stars in the world. And I'm Yo, like, what, what the, the f did Puff just say? When you really watch this video, it sounds crazy because it's almost like Diddy was trying to say they wrestled off the bed, but he didn't want to say it. So he said they wrestled off the Frosted Flakes. And he mentioned that Usher was young at the time and Diddy was an adult. He was older than Usher. So I don't know, that whole story was super suspect and it keeps coming up because people kind of feel like Usher might've been groomed. We don't know that to be true, but that is what people are assuming. Also the whole Meek Mill situation. Well, it's been rumored that Meek Mill gets around in the industry. Now we don't know if it's true or not, but there have been rumors out there that 
Meek likes to get down, especially with some of the wealthier men out there. And when Diddy asks him to party, he doesn't tell him no. Like, <laughs> they allegedly have a lot of fun together. I mean, they wore matching jammies at one point. Uh-huh. And there was a point where Diddy was calling him daddy. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. I'm proud of you. I love you. <laughs> Did you see how quickly Diddy whipped his head around when Meek was talking about effing somebody? I mean, that was pretty interesting to say the least. And one thing I'll never forget is when Nicki Minaj was on her Queen Radio show and she said this that really made me wonder if she was talking about Meek. <laughs> Money can't, and, and a lot of, I ain't gonna say no names, but a lot of these rap, people, people that y'all want me to be with be fake on the low gay. Be abusive mentally and physically and verbally. Be, be having eating disorders. <laughs> <laughs> now, Meek Mill did speak out against some of these rumors about him and Diddy. He actually had a series of tweets talking about it, and I'm not going to go through all of the tweets, but you know, Meek Mill thinks the rumors are outrageous. And honestly, his sexuality really shouldn't be a topic, but. I'm only speaking about it because he was indirectly implicated in Rodney Jones' lawsuit. And Rodney put it out. Oh, God. None of them, this is surprising. Just in case anybody thinks this is surprising, none of this is surprising. Because, I mean, we've heard lots of stories. We've heard tons of stories. Cat Williams' interview on Club Shay Shay. Woo! Cat spilled and shared a lot. And it seems like almost everything that cat said we are now people are now coming forward to bring more receipts to what he said because yo people have come out to talk about um diddy's parties and what goes down or what happens and every other thing not just one not two so many people coming forward to talk about this and people really want to doubt the things that goes on or happens in Hollywood. Yo. Interesting. But yeah, let's go. And Rodney put it out there that Diddy tries to make advances towards men. He tries huh. to turn men out like Meek Mill, allegedly. And it's one thing if the men are down with it, but if they're not with it, then it becomes a problem. Then it becomes sexual harassment. And this is why Diddy is being called out now. And the allegations of Diddy being around minors, that's also very, very disturbing. And that needs to be a focal point as well, if it's true. And about the threats, Rodney Jones did feel threatened by Diddy. Diddy had guns and allegedly he wasn't afraid to use them. In fact, Rodney recalled an incident in his lawsuit where Diddy had a heated argument with Justin Combs and Justin's friend G was present and G got shot. And Diddy allegedly had this whole incident covered up. Also, Rodney alleged in the lawsuit that Diddy would threaten him. He said he would threaten to eat his face. He displayed guns in his face. He bragged about having law enforcement under control and he bragged about often people. He bragged about bribing witnesses and juries in the criminal case concerning the 1999 New York nightclub shooting with Shine. And the victim of that shooting actually spoke out for the first time and corroborated this story. Hey, how you doing? Huh. So, hmm, here today about this latest lawsuit with the P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Sean, Puffy Combs, whatever you want to call them. Lawsuit that has come out involving the producer Little Rod. So basically his last two lawsuits or last two major lawsuits, um, the one with Cassie, she made mention that Puffy made her carry his guns into nightclubs and wherever they went. And he threatened her to make her feel like she had to do so. And of while there were lots of things of importance, that stood out to me. And I'm going to tell you why. In this lawsuit with the producer Little Rod, they were both essayed by him and threatened and physically harmed. But in this lawsuit, he appears to be a very young producer to me. Hmm. But he said something very specific. As a means of threatening him, 
Puffy said, that's why I shot up the club in New York back in 1999 and let Shine take the fall for it. Let me tell you why that's of utmost importance to me. Because I am the woman who he shot in the face. I literally have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got pow pow in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. Even the surgeon who did my surgery to take out part of the bullet fragments that was aspirating into my lungs and try to remove as many bullet fragments as possible testified in the criminal trial that while they were putting me under, I was screaming, Puffy, pew, pew, me in the face. Hmm. He testified in the criminal trial. It is in the record. They all knew he did it. Everybody knew he did it. But he paid off the club bouncer named Sharice and all these other people and the club owners with their video to hide the video. That's his M.O. I told everybody that. This man almost took my life, has traumatized my life, has caused undue harm, irreparable damage to my life, lied his behind off. I've had all these youngins on the internet harassing me, swearing that I'm making it up that he did it. And look what he did to little Rod. He threatened him. Oh, you don't think I bust my gun? I shot up the club in Club New York and let Shine take the fall for it. I shot them people. Well, well, well. It only took 24, 24 whole years for it to come out. You see this tattoo? This commemorates me getting shot. It took 24 years mm. for him to come out and say it. I've been saying it all along, but y'all pick and choose who y'all want to believe. Oh, baby. You ain't seen nothing yet. Not only did he pew, 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 pew me in the face, he also set off a course of harassment against me for the past 24 years. When I tell you the things I went through, there was a time in 2017 and 2018 where I got seven flats on my BMW, mm. seven, the same tire, in a two-year span, seven on the same tire, and they were all new. Every time it happened, I had to get a new tire. I have the pictures to prove it. Harassing me. You want to know why? Because prior to Cassie, I was the only person to be victimized by him and then to successfully sue him and get paid. Hmm. <laughs> and he had to pay me out of his pocket. He has never gotten over that. Oh, baby. You see this RICO charge that's about to come? This conspiring and peering pew -pew up the club and ruining or attempting to ruin my life? As God is my witness, I will not stop until you suffer every single iota of punishment, until I have every second of recompense that you took for me. For every tear that I had to cry or my children had to cry, I am going to get a million back from you. I will not stop until you pay the price for what you did to my life. Y'all ain't seen or heard nothing yet. Listen, if Diddy gets hit with Rico, that's it. That's it for him. I mean, there are just way too many people, way too many victims out there who have stories to tell. Mm. I mean, there are way too many witnesses. And at first I was wondering if Lil Rod was gonna be successful with his lawsuit against Diddy because, you know, he still has to provide proof for all of the allegations. Yes. But the more people come out and corroborate his story, the worse Diddy looks, the more guilty Diddy looks. And I just feel like we're still at the beginning stages. I mean, more people are gonna come out, there's gonna be more lawsuits. It's not over yet. Mm -hmm. It's not over yet. Anyway, tell me what y'all think about this video down below. 
please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Yo, this gets all the more interesting. Just when we thought we've seen enough, but no, we haven't. People coming forward to um, talk about the things that uh, that was done to them by Didi. <sighs> None of this is actually surprising at all. But yeah, we're here for the tea. We're here for every um, little thing, every information because so many people have, have said the things that happens or goes on in Hollywood and how. The elite want to stay or remain at the top and they control everything because this right here <sighs> That's right that lots of things that goes on in Hollywood is really really weird really weird But yeah, none of this is surprising because it is Hollywood. We see that you see all of this in their movie um, see in the music video even in the um, rap songs you see tons of this and it's more like conf them saying like yo they own it well it's it's more like they them saying it and there are no consequences to this but yo i'm loving what we're saying this just gets all the more interesting but let me know what you think about this i'm sure tons of people have interesting things to share and i really love your honest contribution you can share all the useful information i think might be really helpful make sure to like comment and subscribe and all of that stuff and until next time see you in the next video